Hello, and welcome to 5-Minute Math. Today we are looking at the 8th grade concept of modeling slope-intercept form. This is standard 8.5i in the great state of Texas. We are using item number 20 of the 2023 released STAR test. If you haven't done so already, please go ahead and take a moment to pause the video, work this problem out on your own, unpause it, and we will look at our answers together. So we have two points, and that's all we have. And we're looking for an equation. We could graph it if we really wanted to. It might not help us with the equation, but we could at least graph it. Let's change our grid size to small. All right, and so we're going to try to put uh, negative 2. You notice the x values are scale factor of 1, but then they go by 10s and the y's. So negative 270 looks like it's going to be right around here, right? And then the problem is, is we're trying to put this on this grid, and it doesn't match up exactly. So we'll get an approximation here. And then 6, negative 50. Okay, so it goes down right about there. Okay, so that's about the line. So it looks like, you know, we're going to get a, a negative slope. So this is what we can tell so far. So a, a negative slope, because it is moving down. And it looks like my y is going to be about 40. Let's see if that, do we have any of them that look like that? OK, so a looks like it might be a possibility. Uh, and d looks like a possibility. So right now, a and d, just by graphing this, look like it might be a possibility. So. How do we know for sure? Well, what we need to do is let's take a look at our reference materials. Right, slope intercept form is that y equals mx plus b. That's what all of our answers are in, so we need to find slope intercept form. The only information they give us are two points. We can use that to find the slope of a line. That third line, m equals change in y over change in x. So let's do that. All right, so we're going to open this back up. And what do we know? Well, the m equals the change in y over the change in x. And let's just make this x1, y1, x2, y2. You could swap those if you want to. Just make sure x1 is always with y1, x2 is always with y2. So y2 is negative 50 minus 70. And then I've got the 6 minus negative 2. Okay, So that's going to be negative 120. Okay, so that's going to end up being a plus 8. Okay, so m is going to equal negative 15. All right, and that does kind of line up with what we have down on d. So d is looking pretty good right now. Uh, but how do we know for sure what my y-intercept is? Because I thought it was about, I can't sure where I had it lined up, about 40 I think is where I had it or so. Well, since we have this, y equals mx plus b, and I know my m equals negative 15, I'm just going to substitute, let's just substitute in those points right there. Okay, so let's say my y equals 70, because that's that first point right there. My m equals that negative 15. My x is going to equal that negative 2. I need to uh, match the x with the y. If I wanted to, I could have done the 6 and negative 50. That would have worked. Uh, but I decided to do the, you know, the negative 2 and 70. Plus b, look, I've got everything except for b. Let's solve for b. So 70 equals, I've got the negative 15, and I've got the negative 2. So that's going to end up being a positive 30 plus b. Right, so I just subtract 30 from both sides. And that's going to cancel that out, and I'm going to get 40. All right, so I was correct. I said y is, you know, approximately 40. y actually equals 40. So what do I know so far? Well, now I can put my y-intercept form, my slope-intercept form, all together. My m equals negative 15. My b is my y-intercept. So that's going to be my 40. So y equals negative 15x plus 40. Even based on plotting those two points, that gives us a pretty good approximation. We thought it was either A or D based on the y-intercept, and it is D. And that is my answer.